Welcome back everyone, I'm the Depressed Eeyore and this is Lancashire Mobile Apex Season 15. Uh, so I deranked again, I lost twice in a row which uh, broke the protection and brought me back down to Silver 2. Uh, which was kind of no surprise uh, because I did a thing and uh, my box is quite different now. I pretty much am full assassins with tanks and healers still. Well, not still, I mean now I have more assassins. Some of them are very situational. Illustrial has to be on essentially natural terrain. Um, and uh, Narm here has to be, uh, it only bypasses guard for, uh, for against flyers. Um, but Narm does provide things like sprint, which could be an attack buff and a mobility buff. Um, I also brought in Tiaris because I needed someone that can actually boost everyone's damage a bit more. Um, because if I fail to get the kill, it's really going to be... Uh, Kind of, that's kind of it for me. Um, as for the losses I ran into, uh, go figure. The, the I knew the moment I swapped in Illustrial, I was going to get a, a map that didn't work well for her. And sure enough, I got the Sky map. It was also someone that was like a season 11 veteran, a uh, Lancashire veteran. So um, I was not really that surprised that I got um, outdone. I was also t player two, and player two has so many disadvantages if you don't have an act again. And even, even with an act again, you're still kind of not in the best situation. Um, and then the the map, uh, the map battle after that, I honestly don't remember. Oh, I remember what it was. It was a combination of, um, of Luna and uh, the Awakened. Pretty much ensuring that they would get first strike even though I was player two. Um, so those are things I have to kind of take into account. Anyway... Um, as for the box itself, uh, everyone here has uh, is maxed out except for um, I don't remember your name, but you're only five stars. And then uh, Tiaris doesn't have max uh, inscriptions. Um, I'm gradually working them up, but at this point, I it doesn't. She's not really needed for the inscriptions. I just need her for the buff. Um, she of course can provide the uh, the attack blessing buff, which can increase your damage output by thirty percent and make it so you take uh, a lot less counterattack damage, uh, which could be really, really helpful. Also, she can provide some self-healing uh, whenever you're attacking, which has long since fallen off with the meta, but it is something. Also, she has that long duration, uh, she has that um, 3C buff that can also increase mobility. Um, also, with her exclusive, she essentially can give attack blessings uh, with just single target spells um, that last a turn, which is really, really helpful. So, if I ever need to buff anyone for a snipe or something, that is well within range. Um, as for my opponent here, uh, this one... Uh, I mean, it looks to be mostly sniping. There is some AoE, and of course there's some of the traditional top tier meta characters that prob probably just wanted. Um, for the most part, uh, obviously ca characters like Hilda is a problem for assassin boxes because she negates crit. Awakens annoying because I actually don't have Resident Seal in the box anymore. Um, I'm just taking that risk now. Also, even even without the um, Spellbound debuff, um, she can swap positions with somebody, which can give, which can reposition a, a character closer, um, so they can you know get a hit in. Um, I've been a little bit more open about letting my opponent have Grin Shield because I have Narm now, and Narm is very 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 good at killing uh, flyers, and she can bypass guard whenever targeting her. Um, but I haven't really had too many opportunities. Um, Rodham I've been running into more often. He's uh, always been a pain. His stupid grappling hook nonsense is just super annoying. Uh, this is the first time I think I've gone up against someone else's Karika. Uh, so this will be different. Besides that, everything else is kind of stuff I've seen before. Um, there's of course the um, Auden Kelmo here who can provide portals. Uh, for the most part, since I usually first pick um, Christiane, I was kind of okay with them having casters, especially since they're easier to snipe. I went ahead and got rid of the Awakened, grabbed Christiane, uh, they went ahead and opened with taking out my Sissy White, and uh, I think it's Tatalia, I think is her name. Um, but yeah, that character, uh, got, I was actually surprised they first banned Tatalia. She's not even six stars, but of course my opponent doesn't know that. Um, went ahead and she, my opponent grabbed uh, Rosen Seal. We got uh, Rodham and Sword and Light and Shadow. Uh, mainly the 
usually the go-tos is anyone that can either negate single targets um, or have the ability to self-res because that kind of defeats the purpose of the assassination. Um, in this map, Rodham does have a lot more to play with as far as his grappling hook is concerned, so I went ahead and got rid of him. Um, the rest of these characters are not too bad. Um, I'm a little concerned about Lucretia, but I don't think I, I figured my opponent was not going to grab her anytime soon because I have Christiane, and Christiane can easily tank um, the magic damage. Um, I'm a little concerned, of course, of course, about Karika, but since my opponent is player two, um, as long as I don't let my opponent have an, an act again, like Liana here, I I might be able to just have initiative and win. Um, I'm going to grab Savaria because, of course, um, lost more of my healers. Uh, so at this point, I lost all my act agains, uh, which I guess was my opponent's target. I was completely fine with having Tiaris because I just wanted to ensure I get kill on my opponent. Uh, my opponent did grab Karika. So I went ahead and got rid of Hilda because I didn't want to deal with the crit negation. Got rid of Iron Blood Commander because of the extra mobility. Grabbed Tiaris. They went and banned uh, Cherry and uh, uh, Kaguya, uh, Ka Kagura or Kaguya. I don't remember which KA name it is. But my opponent picks the same character. Um, theirs is actually Holy um, uh, Holy Class, which is kind of a usual go-to because obviously they can get buffed by Lightbringer. Um, went ahead and got rid of Lucretia, got rid of Jintoki. Jintoki's pretty tanky once he gets his stacks going. I went ahead and grabbed Illustrial. This map has a reasonable amount of grass and forest. It's kind of around the corners a little bit. But as long as my opponent is going through the middle... Well, actually, even if my opponent's going through the middle, that's the only situation where I'm going to have less opportunities to snipe. Um, but beyond that, it's completely okay. Um, I wasn't too concerned about uh, them picking Grinshield at this point, so I was okay with them taking taking Narm. And that leaves me with uh, Pyrotes and Lightbringer. They grab Lightbringer for their tank, which I'm completely okay with them having a tank. Get rid of their Act again, get rid of their Grinshield at this point. I was actually completely okay with them having an Auden Kelmo. Uh, none of these units have a move again uh, option, so the, teleport, the portal is not really that useful as far as getting initiative. Um, the AoE can be a little bit annoying, but it's also all magic damage, and Christi Christiane can help negate that a bit. Uh, Tiaris does. I usually don't take too much AoE heal with uh, Tiaris, but she's also Auden Kalma is also a caster, so I should be able to just snipe her if I can get in range. Grab Pyrotest, so I have three assassins, and they take Auden Kalma. So the nice thing about um, Tiaris with her 3C, um, the bad part about it is that it only lasts two turns and it has a nine turn cooldown. So this is like a one shot thing, but it does provide 15% attack intelligence. So it's not a full faction buff buff, but um, it is better than nothing. And then of course the 30% damage and the plus mobility is always good. Um, oh, also let's see. Yeah, damage taken is halved and then reflect damage is reduced. So it's just really good for dealing with all the usual nonsense. So, uh, Tiaris, I take Sorceresses. I don't really... I mean, there's not really that many troop choices that matter to her. Um, Sorceress uh, does make it so she can actually do some damage. But for the most part, if, if she gets attacked, she's going to die. There's not much, There's no going around it. Uh, but I take Miracle, take Sonata of Strife. Um, which I think Miracle does stack with Sonata of Strife, but I don't remember. And then Heal is, mo is obviously for healing, but also for applying the... Um, the uh, exclusive uh, buffs. Uh, Christian, nothing new. Brought Phalanxes. Honestly, I mean, most of this damage is magic, but I wasn't that... If if they're attacking my tank, that's fine by me. That means they're not attacking my assassins. Uh, Illustrial. So on this map, there is enough... There's a few uh, trees around that she can actually get her extra mobility in. Um, she does have Roundabout. She has her 3C. She has Emerald Crusher. Uh, Honestly, I don't really care for Emerald Crusher because it relies on having debuffs on yourself. Um, but uh, honestly, she doesn't actually have very many good alternatives. Um, also, I used to have my rich uh, back when I did use Illustrial, um, for those who have actually watched those videos, I did use Ulrich's Bow, which gives her additional range. Um, I went ahead and swapped that out for a Extreme Magic Bow. Um, she does have ways to be, be able to attack in melee uh, effectively. But since she's a mounted unit, it actually is really bad when she attacks in melee. But I went ahead and got the Extreme Magic Bow anyway, because it did give her more damage. Because uh, it gives her a lot more attack power. 
instead of a damage debuff. Uh, Pierre test here, standard kit, Forest Knight Elves, and then Sylvaria, standard kit with Disarm and 3C and Deck Gunners. So really, it's just a matter of seeing where my opponent goes. Uh, the big danger here is the Kyogura, um, because she has four range usually, because they usually equip her with the staff that gives her extra range. So I can't actually, I really want to get as close as possible so I can have guard range and be able to position my assassins. But Kyogura is going to put pressure on me for that. So I went ahead and pushed forward. Okay. So yeah, here's the thing. So this kind of worked out. So I spread out a little bit just in case my opponent did try to do her AoEs or whatever nonsense. But uh, Kyira here. Um, so originally, um, Kyira's attack range pretty much went all the way to about here. So it's kind of like a little, little curve here. So you're safe here and then safe in these spots, but anywhere else, uh, Kyogre would be able to actually kind of wreck me. Um, I think even like here was dangerous. I couldn't remember. But in any case, she kindly moved forward. Um, she is holy class, but she only has faceless. So she, is, she has no real way of preventing excess damage or preventing fixed damage. And uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So she is within my normal range for sniping, uh, which is completely perfect for me. Oh, I didn't even look over my opponent's stuff. I apologize. Um, Lightbringer, 3C, Light Flow, Discipline. Um, well, Discipline's a, a rarity nowadays. It has Guardian Infantry. Uh, Kyura here, of course, I mentioned is Holy with Faceless. Uh, full Assassin, looks like. Um, Auden Kelmo here, uh, full single target with 3C, um, brought Fairy Spirit Prophets. Uh, Karika here did bring Shrine Maidens, which is only helpful if you have ways of preventing fixed damage, which I can tell she does not. Um, she has Brilliant Flash, uh, Subame Otoshi, her 3C, her exclusive teleport, and she brought Snare. I'm not sure why she brought Snare. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure why she brought Snare, because um, I figured she would bring her other exclusive, which is the AoE. Because um, that would actually be dangerous, because it's physical damage. So like a combination of Auden Kelmo and Karika with, three, with uh, an AoE could actually wear me down pretty hard. Um, if I'm not careful. But I actually didn't. I actually did not look at Karika skills, I just assumed. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. Anyway, and then Rosen Seal here, full heals. Uh, with Shrine Maidens. Uh, is... Mage class, so um, Twilight Star does bypass. Wow, actually, I'm kind of surprised Rosen Seal's a mage here because Lightbringer can't buff that. Oh well. Anyway, uh, so yeah, went closer and uh, teleporting here for the attack buff. And this actually, I was a bit surprised by because um, uh, she teleported closer. Now, I think my opponent did not assume I had the range bow. I do, of course, so I my uh, snipe range is actually 10, not 9, so Karika's in range now. Um, even better, like, taking out Kyira is always nice, but uh, if I take out Karika, um, the group size goes below 5, uh, which means she loses 3 mobility, as well as some intelligence, and at that point I won't have to really worry about her. And then, of course, there's Auden Kelma who exists. So at this point I was like, alright, cool, everyone's moved, I can safely move up, so I went ahead and moved up. Uh, to be honest, I could have moved. I could have moved since um, Kyira has already moved. I should have moved Illustrial up a step. That would have given me even more mobility, um, which is a little annoying. Because um, right now I can't actually get onto grasslands. Uh, this area here is all snow. And of course, the middle is ice or snow. So I can't snipe with that. But uh, once not a strife, that's going to fix my mistake. So yeah, now I can get to both Grassland tiles here, so I can I can snipe out on Kelmo. Now it's possible my opponent does not know I have the exclusive helmet. Um, that seems to be the theme here. My opponent didn't really take into account exclusive items, which of course is completely understandable. To be honest, that stuff should be should appear as a buff on the bar, but unfortunately they they never do that. So um, opponent goes up, does miracle. Yeah, this is a 
This is kind of yeah. So Lightbringer is helping out Auden Kelma and Kyra with buffs, but their like primary like long range snipe nuker literally has no attack buff, which is kind of weird. But I didn't work. I mean, with that in mind, I should have actually been okay with them, her sniping because she wouldn't be able to kill anything. Also, with this formation here, like the only people uh, that Karika could even target is Illustrial and uh, Pyrotes. Illustrial is actually kind of dangerous. Her HP is pretty low. But I went ahead and went for Karika because, as I mentioned before, it will take care of Kyra's mobility. Oh, sorry, I completely forgot to uh, turn on animations. It's also going a little fast, but that's okay. Actually, I'll keep it three times. So I need to do 11,350. Yeah, 25,000. That's with uh, that's what that's with a plus 15 attack buff and then a uh, attack blessing essentially. So take out that now. Karika or now Kyra can only go to here. And with even with the range staff, she can only reach Christiane. So that pretty much takes care of Kyura. I don't have to worry about her now. Uh, my opponent decides to retaliate with a 3C explosion, which hits three of my units. And does some decent debuffs. Um, got the mobility debuff on um, Christiane, but thankfully did not get it on Illustrial, which uh, would have been a little dangerous. So, a little annoying, but nothing too serious it looks like. So at this point, I was like, alright, well, again, my opponent probably doesn't realize I have the range staff, or not the range staff, the range bow on Pyrotas, which makes it so if I move three or less tiles, I have four range with my 3C. Uh, so with that, I'm able to go to here. My opponent is immune to fixed damage. Oh no, never mind. Sorry, that immunity was the uh, crystal barrier. Twenty-nine thousand there, nearly thirty thousand there. Um, oh yeah, that was more than enough damage. I needed like twenty-four thousand to do what I needed to do. Yep, good stuff. There are even daggers to spare. The thing that's a little annoying about that assassin and attack is it um, it hits the troops first, so most of the damage gets soaked by that, and leads it the and leads it to the troops to finish things off. So yeah, just moving up at this point. Um, I think my opponent, like I said, I think my opponent did not realize the exclusive for Illustrial because Illustrial is not really seen anymore because the map's been getting gradually and gradually worse for her. Um, the the sh the ship in the 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 wrecked ship in the middle map is really bad for her because obviously terrain issues. And then the new lava map is also bad for her. So I go ahead and heal her up but, uh, back to full because I am going to have to deal with retaliate. Um, I do have God Goddess here on TRS, um, so I was able to remove all the debuffs that are on her. And uh, against my opponent here, I need to do around 26,000 damage. Obviously, every step she moves, she gets uh, stronger. Uh, Jade Storm also removed a bunch of buffs and converted them into debuffs. The debuffs got soaked up by the Crystal Barrier, and I think I just did like 45,000 damage, so as you can see, I did plenty. Um, the only thing that got missed here before the um, the, uh, the the surrender was um, I, did, I did have a move again after firing with the roundabout, which I used to move back into the forest to the right, and essentially just ensured I was out of range for anything. Uh, so yeah, pretty straightforward map. Um, I'll probably stick with this box for a bit. I may probably end up just floating around silver for this season. I mean, as much as it would be nice to get a a, um, a skin for Lisa, I don't actually care for it, and uh, I rather not. And I rather just have fun with just goofy boxes for a bit and see how it plays out. Um, so yeah, um, there's definitely things I have to work out as far as ban picking is concerned against certain opponents. Um, I need to find ways to ensure that my opponent doesn't get initiative on me, wh whether I'm player one or player two, and that's just something really hard to balance, especially with the restrictions I put on myself. But in any case, um, our, our, our uh, win percentage is awful, it's gradually getting worse. But uh, at the very least, we're still floating around silver one. Um, 
eventually people will filter up into, you know, gold and Langrisser, and then hopefully I'll be fighting things that are probably a bit more my level. But until then, I am the Depressed Dior. This was Langrisser Mobile Apex uh, Season 15, and I'll see you guys later.